I want to talk about uh, copywriting. I think uh, all of us do it here. Is there anybody that does not use copywriting in this room? Okay, so yeah, we all, we all need to know this. Uh, so a little, bit, a little bit about me. Uh, I've done affiliate marketing since, since I was a kid, since I was 18. Uh, and so I'm 32 now, so I've been doing it for a while. And I, uh, I recently had, uh, you know, I've, I've done pretty well in a lot of verticals. And recently uh, was, was uh, the copywriter for, uh, for a company that, uh, you know, we, it's, it's a company that was billing, you know, anywhere between 80 to $200,000 a day. And all I was doing was their copywriting. So uh, when you have that much data, you're able to split test a lot of things, and you can see what works really quickly. You know, so uh, I've, I've learned a few things, and I kind of wanted to share. This is I'm going to do two presentations today. Uh, this one I'm going to cover just some overlying principles, and then in the next presentation I'm going to share uh, specifically some funnels to get you guys out of the advertorial, which is, you know, like the affiliate, like, go-to. But I'll, we'll go into that and the other one. So in this one, just want to cover uh, seven, it's pretty simple, just seven uh, mistakes most people make when they're writing copy. And, you know, um, I've, been, I've been working with John, and we see a lot of people coming in to, to the affiliate marketing space, and, and I see their landers, and this is kind of what prompted this, is like just very common things that people tend to do. Uh, so, okay, so without further ado, right? Uh, so these, are ro these mistakes are roadblocks to stop you from being successful through your copy. And I'm a, I'm a big believer in, okay, I'm a big believer in studying success, but I'm, but I'm also a big believer on studying what doesn't work. You know, so, so you can study... You can study all you want. Let's say you want to be a basketball player, right? So you can study Michael Jordan all you want. Uh, but but it's, it doesn't paint the full picture up until the point where you have somebody that's tried to be Michael Jordan and failed, right? Like, it's important to see the contrast, and you can learn a lot from, from, the, from the differences. You can see, okay, they took this approach, and that's what was wrong about it. So uh, I want to share to you like the, 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 like the don'ts. Um, all right, so this is, if you, can, if you can just take one thing out of this presentation, just take this one. This is it. Like it's not being clear on what your offer's uh, main benefit is. And uh, what a lot of us do when, when we start writing copy is we, we simply just kind of like put stuff out there and, we, and we, we're like, all right, so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try teeth whitening, right? Or let's say flashlights. Uh, so I, I'm going to just start throwing stuff up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to start like mentioning all the features, all the things that they do, like that the flashlight does. And I'm just going to put it all on the page. And, and it's kind of a, it's a huge guessing game. So this is, this is the biggest problem, you know. Uh, so, so what you want to do when, you, when you're writing copy is you want to really spend a lot of time in figuring out the emotional reason uh, why people are going to buy. And, like, and, and it's not easy. What, what most of us do is, uh, you know, we just kind of like wing it and we... You know, we test a lot of th things, but, it, but most people just kind of like do testing for the sake of testing uh, rather than try to, try to come up with like the emotional, the emotional uh, point. You know, so for example, uh, I'll give you guys uh, an example here. I've used this before, so I'll just keep sharing this. Uh, just because it's, it's pretty good for demonstrations. Um, this, is, this is a lander that I shared before. 
that it, it did pretty well uh, selling this flashlight. Uh, so, so when I first started this, I was literally just throwing stuff up, and there wasn't really any rhyme or reason. It was just a lot of, you know, a lot of little tests. But w when I actually started to dial it in, When I actually started to dial it in is when I actually started to figure out uh, the, the why people were buying this. And I started using an emotional angle. So, so what we did, we started saying uh, about protecting your family, right? Like it was, it was the angle of, you know, not, not saying all the features or benefits like this, this thing is waterproof or you know, whatever it is, or it's very durable. I mean, we, we include those, but we became very, very clear on what, what was it that made people buy this. And it was, and it's not, you know, it's something that you have to, it's, it's uh, this is the beauty of copywriting. This is where the art comes in. And it was sort of like hidden, you know, like the reason why people were buying this was because they wanted to have a, a flashlight that they can rely on that their, their family would, uh, you know, that they, they would be able to, to, like, have in case of any emergency, and they would be able to protect their family. So that's, once we started hitting that angle, like, you can protect your family, then it became profitable. And that's, uh, so, so it's, not, it's not very easy to, to kind of, like, get to this point, yeah? Sorry if I'm jumping ahead, but what was the process that you went through to, to get to that main point that it was about the family, that that's what was most important? So I, I like to use uh, something, uh, uh, so there's this book called uh, Cashvertising. I highly, highly recommend them. And it talks about uh, something called the Life Force 8. And the Life Force 8, uh, it's basically eight key emotions that every human being has. So I always have this book on my desk, and I'm always referring to it. Uh, you guys should definitely check it out. It's very, very good. And, and what it does is like, it, it, like those eight emotions are basically what makes you human. So, those, uh, so there's nobody that doesn't want to protect their loved ones, for example. And, and uh, I don't know them by heart, but it's, uh, do, you, do you know them by heart, Ronnie, by any chance? Yeah, uh, so it's sur survival, protecting your family, um, being superior. Yeah, he's got it right there. <laughs> uh, being superior, uh, being healthy, lo uh, living uh, a long life. And, you know, they're, they're, they're right, check them out. Um, so I basically, my process for, for finding what, what the main like, you know, what the emotional uh, driver for, for my landing page is, is I'm going to test different headlines in, in the, uh, within those eight things. You know, so some of them will fit a lot better for any specific product. So for the, for the flashlight, the one that fits is protection of your loved ones. So that's the, like, I tested a couple of them, and that's... That's basically how I, how I re reached uh, this, this, uh, you know, this trigger. And, one, and the thing is, like, once you see, once you're systematically testing those eight things, like, I could say, I could say, for example, this doesn't really apply for this lander, but if we were going to test it, like, being uh, w one of the life force eight is is uh, being superior or keeping up with the Jonases. Uh, so I could say, like, yeah, you're gonna have a more like a better flashlight than your neighbors or whatever, you know. So I would maybe test that. I mean, it doesn't well work well with this product, but I would test that. And if people respond to that, that's that's the emotional angle is being superior, you know. Uh, in the same way, like people, people don't, you know, people don't buy for the reasons that we don't buy for the reasons that we often like logic ourselves uh, into thinking, you know, okay, that's that's it's a 
So for example, I'm going to give you an example, like uh, Tesla. I know, I know a lot of people that have Teslas, and you know, Teslas are super cool. They're, they're, you know, they're good for the environment. Uh, you get, like, for example, you get like free parking here uh, in Santa Monica when you when you drive an electric car. Uh, it's like, you know, it's kind of like a computer, and it's got all these benefits. But the people that I know that have Teslas. I think that uh, it's, it's mainly why you want to spend so much money on, on a car is because you're like, okay, this is going to make me feel like cooler than, than most people. So, you know, nobody's actually going to ex admit that, you know, like you have to kind of be, go inside yourself and like, and like empathize with your customer, but that's, that's what you have to do as a copywriter. You have to, like, what's the real reason that most people won't actually admit, not even to themselves, but that's the real, uh, what's the real reason that people would purchase this product? And once you get, you know, once you start going into the emotions, that's where you're like playing around in, in like the profitable area of copywriting. So that's, that's sort of like, you know, if you could just take one thing is um, le learn to find the one thing that makes people want to purchase your product. Okay. All right, so mistake number two, um, not doing research on your customer's desires. And, you know, there's going to be sort of like an overarching theme to this, and it's basically don't test just to test. Like, don't just randomly throw shit up there, but rather have a system of, uh, of doing split tests that's based on, on emotional, you know, reactions. So, a lot of people will, will skip this part. John covered, uh, covered uh, well, like, John, John actually covered, like, research on your competitors. Um, this is actually a little bit different. Um, what you want to do is you want to go into forums, you want to go into Facebook groups, you want to go into, um, into any place that you think that your where your customer is going to be at. So for example, I recently was testing a coffee product. Uh, we were selling a coffee product. So um, one of the biggest question marks on that was like, why do people buy coffee? You know, like, why do people buy coffee? And, there's all these reasons, <laughs> and you know, like you have to, you have to, you have to go into, like, for example, in our case, we went into like coffee addicts. You know, like coffee addicts, kind of like it's a, they have like a certain pride into being like a, like loving coffee. And there's all these forums and that you can find for people that are like, yeah, I love coffee, and like they, they just kind of like it's like a culture, you know. So I went. That's where I went to do my research, you know, and I just read, I, you know, like I'm, I'm just seeing, uh, like listening to their language, what are the reasons that people buy, and that's, that's the main thing, you know, what do they love about coffee, in this example. Um, so they, they love, the, is it the energy, is it, uh, you know, is it the taste, is it the ritual, and you know, all of these things are valid, but like you have to know that. And then you systematically have to like list them and then start putting them as your, as your main benefit to see which one, which one does uh, the best. And, and the thing about, the thing about it, uh, the way I've evolved into, into writing landing pages now is it's so simple. Like the landing pages are so simple and they tend to do uh, way better than, than super cluttered because there's no guesswork. You know, there's like I, I systematically arrived to the main benefit and then like that's it. Like that's all the page is going to say. You know, I may throw a couple of like features and a, and a special offer, but the, the main gist of it is that's it. Like you don't, you don't, try, so when you're writing your landers, Think of it as, uh, as being Apple, right? Like when you're, the way Apple does it, uh, like their marketing is 
super, super simplistic, you know, and, and it's very, very effective. They don't, or, or for example, or for example, Pepsi, uh, like, I, uh, this is an old one, I, I don't even like Pepsi, but like their slogan is like the flavor of the new generation or whatever. They don't, they don't try to come up with like 10 slogans into one and, or like a long pitch. They just have like one thing and that's what they stick with and that's, uh, then they spend millions and millions of dollars into this one thing. And that's basically because it works, you know, they tested this. So in the same way, like, uh, like yeah, you, you're just basically taking the customer through this journey of this one thing in your landing pages. So that's, you know, that's basically what you want to be doing. Um, and again, like a lot of it comes from the research. You, you know, most of the products that I've sold uh, throughout my life has been to women. So a lot of times I don't, I'm like, really people buy this? Uh, that's my, you know, that's my first reaction. Uh, but then I start getting into it. I start seeing like what, what makes uh, customers like tick. And then I understand like, okay, it, you want to be able to understand your customer. You know, you want to be able to empathize and be able to name all the things that they, like all their fears, all their desires. And once you're able to do that, you're going to be very, very, very successful. Um, okay, so yeah, like number three is uh, not identifying what emotion or trigger were, were, will make your customer purchase. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of like jumping around here. Um, but yeah, this is super, super key. It's, it's like the difference uh, between, a, and the, you know, like the thing about it is a landing page that works and a landing page that doesn't work, if you put them next to each other, that you won't even be able to tell the difference. Like you, like a lot of pages, like that, I, that I've, for example, like if I take, if I take a page that when I started split testing it, and after, before it was profitable and after it was profitable, you would think it's the same thing. You would literally just look at it and be like, this is, this is the same thing. But, but so it's very, very subtle. And it's like the little, little uh, things that you're like sniping at people. Like, it's like a sentence and you're taking them through this, through this story that uh, you, don't, you don't actually want to, you don't actually want to like give it away, like you don't actually have to say, hey look, go buy this, but all you're doing is like you're throwing all these uh, like ideas that are like, hey, the product, you're throwing all these like hopeful ideas. So for example, is like um, teeth whitening, you're just saying like your teeth are going to look so much better, you're, you're going to feel so much better. It, takes 10 years out of the way you look, and uh, it, it will get you a better job. And like you're throwing all these things, and, and, but you're not actually making the customer do anything. You're just like, hey, this is what happens when your teeth are wider. You know, it's just, it's just a byproduct, and it's easy. You know, like, and you're just putting all this stuff out there, like kind of uh, like just making their, their brain work you're just like this, you're just setting them up and they're knocking it up, uh, if that makes sense. And that's sort of the, the process, yeah? What platform do you use to test your landers and how much data, how many visits or impressions do you want to look at before you make a call on it if it's got a certain percentage, uh, you know, in the um, I've been, yeah, I've actually... I'm, I'm super, super late to the game of volume. Uh, John swears by it, and I'm like, uh, it's so, it takes away so much time for me. But uh, I've, been getting, I've been getting into volume. I was using Optimizely before. Uh, yeah, but I think volume, there's a lot of, a lot of power in volume. And uh, yeah, what other one? Uh, God, I forget the name right now. Uh, there's the. I'll have to. I'll have to look it up for you. I haven't used it in a couple months, but that one's really good for uh, multivariate testing. But the main one I'm using right now is Volume. 
that'll give you all the information that you need. I, I'm, I mean, there's, there's, there's multivariate testing and, there, and there's split testing. For the most part, what I do is uh, split testing. Yeah, because you, you need, I mean, especially at the beginning, multivariate testing is once you have a lot of volume, uh, you can, you know, test. But, but initially, you want to you be making big changes, you know? So I'll just, and a lot of times to answer, I mean, truthfully, uh, what I, a lot of times I'll just do, do a test for a day. I'll spend over what my payout is. So let's say my payout is 60 bucks. I spent 100, didn't make a sale. I don't even, I didn't even, I, I just throw away that lander. I'm like, this is garbage, it doesn't work. Like, what's the point of me split testing it anymore? So I just redo, and I do big, big changes. And, and if you don't have sales, what you want to do is you want to look at click-through rate. Uh, you want to look at offer, uh, sorry, you want to look at uh, click-through rate to your ads. You know, so, so if, so if uh, I don't know, for example, like Facebook, your, your ads are less than 7% click-through rate, but no sales. You're like, okay, the ad, okay, the ad is the problem. If if the click-through rate is good, then I'm like, all right, the ad is working. It's the lander. If the if the landing page has a poor click-through to the offer, then that's the problem right there. The lander's not working. If I'm getting tons of clicks to the offer, and it's not converting, I'm like, this offer is just not doing well. You know, so I, I just get, I, I go by whatever data I have. I don't necessarily, you know, there's no specific system, but once you have sales, then, you know, the fun begins. Yeah. <laughs> I'll repeat your question. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of, so the question is how to, how do you identify the emotion or the trigger? And it's by looking at the data. That's, that's a, a sh the short answer is simply by looking at the data, whatever data you have. Uh, you, th the whole thing is like not guessing when you're doing your tests. You may not, at the beginning, you're not going to know what's going to work, but you're, you're testing something specific. That's the big difference, You're, if that makes sense. Okay, how do, how do you uh, find the specifics to start? That's what he's asking. So um, it's, it's the life force eight. That's my starting point. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I literally go put, put the list, uh, I pull the list out. You, you know, you can just Google it, life force eight, cast advertising. And uh, I, I go like, all right, which one of these apply to my, uh, to my product, to the product that I'm trying to promote? Uh, so, for example, if I'm doing dating, it's like, you know, obviously being appealing to the opposite sex. That's, that's a pretty obvious one. Uh, so I, I go like, all right, that's the emotional trigger. I'm going to test this one. I'm going to test this one. And there's usually like two or three that are obvious ones. And then I just try... Uh, systematically doing like uh, tests within these and I do it you know the first thing you're gonna you know if you're running affiliate offers the first thing or just any campaign really uh, the first thing you're gonna test the, the first place you're gonna test it out is in your ad so you don't even need to write the whole landing page to know uh, like all right the ad this ad is obviously generating a lot more interest yeah. Yeah, because your main point or your headline, because your main point, your headline, and your benefit have to be the same on the lander as they are in the ad. If they're different, then you'll see a huge drop off on your lander too. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, the, it's the, the the emotional reason is there, but sometimes it pays off very well when you when you present them in a different like a twist. You know, the ad is. The ad, for example, a, a, like a, I guess a, a way to do this is not quite telling the whole story, uh, but just using the angle, which I do this a lot, using the angle of, of intrigue. 
of, of like, what is this thing that's causing this result? And then when they have to click to the lander to find out. So that's another, I, I, I'm not necessarily giving away like the, the emotional reason there, it's just generating intrigue. Okay, so this is uh, my favorite mistake. Uh, it's crazy, like trying to cram everything you can into your copy. Uh, this, is, this is a really, really common one, and it's like the, just, you just basically write everything out, right? You, you're like, all right, this product does this, does that, does this, and you're excited, you don't actually know which one works, but you're like, I'm gonna put all of it. And that's common, that, like, that's, that's way more common uh, than it should be. You know, like people, you don't, you, you're like, uh, there's space, it doesn't cost me anything to just put it all on the landing page, why wouldn't I? That's sort of the, the logic. And, you know, what I found uh, is that you can, you can confuse the customer pretty easily the more stuff you throw. So you want to be, you want to be kind of, I mean, my approach is doing like very minimalistic, like just making sure that, okay, this makes sense. This makes sense. It's clear. And, and the difference between one or the other is I, I'd rather, I'd rather say one thing that is very clearly understood that th 10 things that the customer is going to forget. You know, like you, the whole thing, I, I read this book on like Apple's approach and their whole thing is like Steve Jobs' thing was you don't have the world's attention. You don't like the world is busy. There's so much stuff going on. You can only, you can only get across one simple idea. So if you just stick to your idea, you're going to be a lot more successful than, uh, uh, than trying to do it all, you know. Um, so this is, this is one of my favorites. I'll actually show you this example. There's two landers here. This is... Like, I, I don't know if you get... Well, yeah, I think you guys will be able to tell the difference on this one. Like I said, it's kind of subtle. Uh, a lot of times you can't really tell, but um, so this is like a this is the busy one that I consider like too busy. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, and you know what is it? like one headline, then another. And there's three, four, five different sections. Um, this is another section over here. There's like all the stuff here. Uh, and, and by the way, um, something, a, a lot of this is kind of like, you know, I developed just with instinct, uh, but my, uh, the, the reason, the, and I've hired copywriters myself, I've, I've hired copywriters, and the way I can tell someone is a great copywriter is my eye just goes into the text. Like, if I just see this and it just looks so busy, uh, this to me is, you know, it's, it's too busy. There's, like, too much, like, for example, here. It's, like, too much, like, trying to do way too much. Uh, and if my eye just goes, like, oh, there's stuff there, but doesn't actually want to read it, then I know, like, this is terrible copy. You know, it's, and, and, and a lot of times it's very, very subtle. I'll show you the, the one... Um, these are kind of like tests right now, it's not, uh, we, we're just testing this. Can't believe I'm sharing it here. But, uh, so, so simplified, one headline, one sub-headline, FDA approved, giant, right? Then here's how to quickly remove yellow stains from your teeth, giant. Like it's simple, you know, so my, my eye just kind of like is able to I can process this, and I don't know if I don't know if you guys can see it. I mean, look at presenting it like this. It's almost like you know, it's it's almost like the same thing, but it's not. It's way way clean. It's cleaned out, and the differences between you know, like 
good co- like great copy and mediocre copy is sometimes something that's very, very subtle. Um, so yeah, like, you know, just one thing here, total time, two hours, you know, FDA approved. And it's, it's taken, it's, it's like dumbed down. It's, it's the reason why Donald Trump, uh, you know, like got, got his message across. You know, it was like just very, very simple, you know, like the, the language he uses. And so you want to do the same thing. You want to just uh, focus on, on less, but, but clearly delivered. And, and a lot of it is also the visual aspect. Um, you, want to, you want to like get rid of all the clutter. I've tested this uh, many, many times, and simple always, always does better. Um, all right, so this, one's, uh, this one is subtle, but it's very, very powerful. Uh, mistake number five, making assumptions about what your customer uh, wants or doesn't want. And what I mean by this is a lot of times you, you will skip through uh, something that you would otherwise test, but because, and I do, you know, like, uh, I'm guilty of this myself, and I have to, like, literally tell myself, no, I don't know that. Like, I literally don't know that. Why wouldn't I test that? Uh, because... What we do is we think we are the customer, you know, and if you are the customer of your product, that's amazing. Like that's, you know, that, that's a huge advantage. But, you know, if you're an affiliate and you're promoting all sorts of things, a lot of times and most of the time for me, like I'm not a big shopper, uh, you know, like I don't buy stuff from ads. So I just, I, if I went by my own assumptions, I would never think that people were going to buy weight loss supplements or like the, that people were going to like sign up to rebills or stuff like that, you know, you would think, okay, like uh, it's just working out, it's going to work, you know, like that's working out and eating healthy, that's the way. But, you know, a lot of times people just want uh, a, a, like a magic solution, you know, so that's, you have to, you have to like step back and not make any assumptions in your tests. And this is super important. Um, so, yeah, like you, you wanna, you wanna, like anything that, uh, anything that you see, like that, that is based on the Life Force Eight. You wanna test it. You know, you don't wanna come. You wanna come in as a blank page. And just because something uh, worked in one vertical or something you tested in another vertical didn't work, you, you don't want to make the assumption that, okay, this is either going to work or not going to work. You want to test everything. And this is, uh, this is sort of like, you, the, I guess the most practical application that I, that I can tell you for this is in the ads. You know, like sometimes stuff that's crazy for us, uh, you, you you want to have zero prejudice and just put it up there. And a lot of stuff will work. I mean, I've found some very, very profitable things by, by literally being like, all right, I'm open-minded here. I'm going to see if this is going to work before I make any assumptions. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's a big one. Uh, mistake number six, not paying enough attention to the headlines. So... Uh, so the, the statistic is, uh, Ogilvy says that uh, the statistic is five to one uh, people are only going to read your headline. They're like, so, so your headline is basically your landing page. Like your, your, your headline is to most people, to about, you know, like to, to a large group of people, all they're going to see is your headlines. So that's where you need to put 80% of your effort, you know, and, and when you're testing stuff out, test headlines above anything, and even more importantly, the top headline, and that's such an overlooked fact, that's it, like, by just changing, I mean, uh, one of the tests that I was doing recently, uh, by just changing the headline, the, the, and it was like, <laughs> it was one word in the headline, the conversion rate dropped 20% just because we took one word out of the headline. 
And that's with a ton of volume. So it's like, it's crazy. Uh, like your headline is the absolute, especially, you know, like the main, main headline is the most powerful thing in your landing page. So, you know, a lot of us just kind of know that, but we don't really apply it. So, you know, my goal here is just kind of remind you of some of the basics uh, and just don't forget, like your headline is the landing page. Um, then, you know, once you have that, once you have the headlines, you do the rest, but most of it will go into your headline. Uh, yeah, and this is mistake number seven, you know, just split testing for the sake of uh, split testing, not really being systematic about anything you're doing. It's just like a big blob. So, you know, you can get by and you can find some stuff that's going to work, but it's going to cost you a lot more money than if you develop a system for, for the way you're, you're doing your tests. So you want to you wanna do like, okay, this, 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 I'm testing this, I'm testing that. I'm not making any assumptions. And if this one doesn't work, uh, also, like, it's, this is also for your sake, for, you know, like, uh, if, if, for example, you're testing stuff and nothing is working, you can, like, your system can be your go-to. You know, instead of getting frustrated, you look at, all right, like, you didn't try anything. You didn't try everything. You may feel like you tried everything, but let's look at what you actually tested. This emotion, you tested this, you tested that, or you didn't. And until you've, like, systematically gone through the whole process, then you can't really tell what's profitable or not. So you want to you wanna take... Uh, the systematic approach to developing uh, landing pages. Uh, yeah, and this is a bonus. It's trying to logic your customer into buying. Uh, so by telling them, you know, uh, by telling them, here is the, you know, guarantee. For example, a guarantee is a, is a logical close. Uh, like uh, it's the difference to to give to give a specific example. It's the difference between in in the flashlight campaign. It's the difference between saying the you know this has like strobe, this has like SOS mode, that this is indestructible, uh, versus saying this is going to protect your family. You know, it's a very 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 powerful difference. So you don't. Uh, this is another, another pretty interesting fact about writing copy. A lot of times, uh, you know, you don't actually mention the product. Like, you don't actually, uh, not always, but a lot of times, um, so like, you know, best copywriters don't actually talk about the product. The product is sort of like the byproduct. You know, it's, and, and think about when, for, I like this example, uh, uh, Think about the reason why people want to win the lottery, right? Uh, so the lottery, you know, the lottery ticket is the product, but the but that's not why people buy the lottery ticket. the 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 product is being able to quit quit your job and just be like, you know, a living life and spending twenty million dollars on a giant house all of a sudden and, you know, just going and living the, living the life for nothing, you know, that's, that's the product. But it, so if you're trying to sell a lottery ticket, that's what you do. You want to, you want to take the customer to the point where after he purchased the product and he got the results of the product. And that's, that's, that's the approach you want to take. So that's why a lot of times we don't mention the product because it's not about the product. It's about what happens after, you know, like after you drank the, the cup of coffee, then you're feeling energized. Then you started your day like it was great coffee. So like you're, you're, you're happy now, like your mood is better. Uh, you're focused. And, you know, these are, these are the reasons people buy and it's why, you know, the, it's the reason why we don't... Uh, mention the product a lot of times. It's not really about the product. So I think that's it, guys. Um, I'll do another one. And... Um
yeah, I'll do another one and I'll show you like specific types of funnels and I'll break down. I'll give you three funnels that, uh, that, I've, been, that I've consistently been able to beat the um, advertorial type of landing page. I'll get into that. All right. Thank you, guys. Any questions, by the way? Yeah. Let me, let me see if they have questions. Yeah. This is a um, question more about the, the offers. How, how do you, what, what's a good offer? I'm, I'm on the agency side, so I don't have as, as much experience as an affiliate marketer. But uh, what's a good offer, and how do you find offers? And in your opinion, what's a good offer? Uh, yeah, so you basically, I mean, I rely a lot on what people are testing, what I see, uh, like my friends. Like, I ask around, what are you doing? And, you know, being an affiliate is kind of like you go on, you go by the trends. It's, if you see something is kind of doing well and you hear that someone else is doing well, that's why you want to come to places like this. You know, just one thing that somebody tells you, like, oh, yeah. That's, what, that's how, I, for example, just to give you a specific example, like how I started promoting uh, flashlights was that I was over there, and a, and a friend of mine was like, oh, yeah, this guy's, like, killing it with flashlights. And I'm like, I've seen this product before. I didn't even know it was, like, an affiliate product. I thought it was, I don't know, I didn't really think much about it. And I'm like, yeah, I'll give it a try. That's, it was just a word of mouth kind of thing. Uh, or also, you know, I like specific verticals. And I go also by, I, I listen to my affiliate manager's, like I'm like they're like, try this offer is doing really well. Okay, I'll try it out. What what does something like that pay like on a? You know, I'm sorry. What does something like that pay like when you deliver a lead or or make a sale? Oh, like a like a I don't know like a, depends like teeth whitening for example pays fifty five to sixty bucks. Uh, yeah. So, any other questions? When you're starting off with, uh, you know, getting into an offer, if you're talking about the Life Force Eight. Are you usually, are you testing multiple um, aspects of the Life Force Eight, or do you kind of just dive all into one and then if? if uh, it yeah, great, no. I usually, okay. The, the truth is, usually there's like one or two that are obvious for right. the product, you know. But uh, but I will test uh, one or two. You know, I'll, I'll test two and sometimes three, but. Most of the time, it's just like two really that are obvious. Okay. Uh, like one of them is like the love for good, the enjoying food, right? So that's like an obvious enjoying food and beverages. So that's like an obvious one for coffee, for example. Uh, what about like in general? Once you decide that you're gonna, um, you know, put your effort into running an offer, how often do you, if ever, um, you know, just fail? Uh, yeah, I mean, it happens, it happens. I mean, sometimes, sometimes it takes months, you know, I, I, I mean, I've had offers that, I, I, I just like this story with a friend of mine, uh, we, we spent like five months literally just locked in an office, just every day testing stuff, and it was very frustrating, and and it was like, okay, nothing's working, man. Nothing's working. And then when things hit, it was insane. Like it was, it totally paid off. You know, we were, we went from like zero to like 100k a month. And it was like, all right, cool. Let's, you know, that was one of my first like big campaigns. What and was like you said that like something just changed like after the work you put in? What was like you know in general? Was it like uh, in general we were. This was, this was back in the day, this, uh, in general what changed was we test, we went through like three different offers, like three different uh, verticals. So we tried ringtones, then we tried, uh, then we tried, a, what is it, I can't remember, it was, uh, it was a, then we switched to weight loss, and then we tried green tea was the rage back then. Uh, but we were doing one before, so it was like switching from, uh, I want to say acai, it wasn't acai, it was before acai, but like acai, 
we were testing green tea, and then we switched to the new thing, which was like acai, and that's what did it for us. So, I mean, the, the biggest lesson is don't really give up. You know, like if, you, if you've never had a, a campaign, you will doubt it, you will be very frustrated, and it sucks, you know, and it happens. Uh, but, but, like, I literally never met anybody, literally never met anybody who's stuck with it, who isn't making a ton of money right now. Like, not a single person. I remember this one guy, my, uh, my, he, was, he was a friend of mine, but his, he had, another friend of mine was funding him. And he was, like, really mad because he kept doing all these tests and nothing worked. And he's like, I'm just throwing money with this guy, man. Like, nothing is working. And he, he stopped funding him. And then this guy just didn't stop. And now he's killing it. Like, and that's, that's, a, that's a story I like to remember. You know, it's a, this guy just literally persisted through it. Uh, even when he, you know, didn't have any money to test anything, he just kept going. And now he's like really, really big affiliate. On the topic of split testing for split testing's sake, can you give some insight into or point to a resource for like what's the strategy or pattern for split testing in a functional way instead of just an organized but still random? So what I like to do is I like to keep uh, I like to keep a file on my computer where I'm like uh, w when I first start I will I will write down like all right this is the emotion is it this emotion and I, I actually recently recorded myself going through this uh, I should put those those videos up but it's like I did like a series of videos where I'm systematically re recording it uh, like going through it so I'm like. All right, here is the here is this emotion. I'm gonna test this emotion, and then if this doesn't work, I'm gonna test this emotion. If it, that doesn't work, then I'm gonna test this emotion. And then, um, and then actually, what you can do is you wanna. It depends, you know. It, it's always it's, you know it's kind of an art form, but um, but you you if if you feel that that like two are kind of you're not sure. Like, okay, this or this, you just throw them up, you know, throw different variations of that one. And then the one that does better, obviously, that's the one, you know, and then, and then you dig deep into that one, you know. So figuring out the main emotion is not the biggest challenge, I guess. Like figuring, like the, the details of how to present that emotion is the real challenge, you know. Like you'll, that's, that's what really is going to make your landing pages profitable. If that makes sense. Cool. Any more questions? All right, guys. Thanks.